innocent children. Uh, d- dude, dude, you need to cut it out. You need to back it up. Knock and, it off. And you need to understand, Carrie's got a daughter. I've got little children. We would never. It's called a public bathroom because it's public. If a man wants to go in there to look, touch, rape, whatever his agenda is, I'm telling you right now, making a law and putting a sign on a door saying women only is not going to stop him. It's a gun-free zone. Telling me that this campus is gun-free zone. That is a very good No guns allowed by law. So there should be signs all over the place that say no pedophiles allowed, no raping allowed, no molesting allowed. Yes! Because if you because if you don't put that sign up, and, and it's funny because some of the uh, dude, I need to go find a bathroom, put that up there, and take a picture of it, put it up on Facebook. We got to do that. Got to. No molesting allowed. Oh, so, but I'll, here's your I'll, point. I'll, let's I'll push w- the door open let's... a little bit. <laughs> and I'll, you know, I'll be like snickering. Oh, as I'm going to oh. the women's bathroom. There, it's... we got to take that picture. That will be the next meme. But let's clear the water up even more. What Cruz is trying to accuse Trump of is allowing illegal activity such as molesting young women. You don't need to force this gender control in bathrooms in order to prevent the illegal activity of molesting young children. Right. It's already not allowed. Right. Right. M- molesting a child is illegal. You'll go to prison. By trying to micromanage who goes into public bathrooms, it- it's not. Oh, did you say public? Yeah. So it's in the public. So well, these public. bathrooms are pub- public. Oh, oh, so everybody should be allowed anywhere. I mean, it's public. Okay. <laughs> I've got a confession to make. Okay. I'm coming out with it. Oh, boy. Back in college. Oh, boy. This is going to get ugly. There was a bar that we would always go to, Harry's Chocolate Shop. That's a bar? Well, back during Prohibition, it was called Harry's Chocolate Shop. Oh, that's cool. I like that. And there was a trap door in the floor where you could go in the basement to drink. It's really weird because the building wasn't even built until the 60s. Right. Just kidding. Just kidding. (laughs) But that's where they keep the liquor now. Okay. The women's bathroom... Is one toilet, one one sink. The men's bathroom, a sit down and a stand up. So there's technically two in the men's bathroom. Okay. And the line for the women's bathroom is always super long. Dude, women would jump the line all the time and go in the men's bathroom. Okay. Because with, one, we had no problem. We thought it was kind of cool. And two, uh, nobody ever got raped. I was in there using the bathroom myself as a girl walking past me. I'm like, whoa. She's like, I'm not in here for that. I need to use the bathroom. I mean, she was all indignant. <laughs> I'm like, have at it, sister. You know, and then all of a sudden I hear somebody screaming, who does number two work for? Oh, wow. <laughs> I got to get up. Is it a, what is it, a stall? Yes. So they had their privacy. Yes. And they, they needed to go really bad. Yes. And they had a couple, and so they were tipsy, and they, were, they had liquid courage. Oh, they had plenty of courage. And it became such that peop, the other girls would dare their girlfriends to do it, too. Oh, just, I dare you. I dare you. You're, you're going to wait in line. Because the alternative is to you. wait in a really long line. Right. Wow. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. It's an interesting little... This is, this is the difference between theory and reality. And I'm telling you right now, cruise people are so lost in Theoryville. I've used a girl's bathroom. They're so before. lost in Theoryville. But I, let, I, I, wanna, I have I have used a girl's bathroom. I want to read something I wrote. The ones that lock. I yes. want to read something that I wrote, and I wanted to get your um, uh, reaction to it. It's not my original thought. I'm just kind of rehashing what Rush Limbaugh said this week, and I want to see what you thought. So, so w- with regards to the LGBT North Carolina bathroom debacle, it looks like the shoe is on the other foot. So Rush Limbaugh points out that these music artists in North Carolina, which, by the way, if you didn't know, all these businesses are boycotting North Carolina. The first one that was like PayPal, which is huge. They were going to relocate their world headquarters in North Carolina. As soon as this law passed, they pulled out. They pulled out. They didn't do it. Meanwhile, since then, since the PayPal thing, 
a bunch of other um, music acts decided to jump on board. All these um, music acts, uh, so, some of uh, there's a huge list. Even the one that I went and saw two weeks two weekends ago pulled out. Candlebox. Oh, they were they, really? they were supposed to play North Carolina. Okay, so Vulture.com is kind of a pop. Yeah, it's a, it's a pop uh, website. They they came out with an article that lists all the people, all the uh, music acts who have decided to pull out of the um, North Carolina for this reason, and it, it's huge. There's there's a list of people that have completely canceled their concerts. There's also a list of upcoming concerts who um, whose acts are um, going to still do it, but they've voiced their opinion against it. And then there's su there's another huge list of uh, acts that are upcoming. They're scheduled to go to North Carolina, but have not yet um, pulled out or even made a comment yet. So they got this thing very comprehensive list. And uh, two of the big ones, like Pearl Jam and Bruce Springsteen, have just flat out canceled. So what R Rush Limbaugh points out, they are, in fact, corporations, right? Correct. Like Bruce Springsteen, Correct. his music act is... Oh, it's completely incorporated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Same thing with Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam a is, business. is yeah. a business. Right. Okay. Their fans who would buy tickets to see them are their customers. Okay. Right. So why is it okay for a customer to sue a bakery or a pizza parlor? Oh, oh, oh. Out they they sued them out of business for not serving them because of differences in opinion. But then turn around and say it's okay to not serve the customers of North Carolina because of their difference in belief. A Christian bakery is forced by a court to make a cake with two penises on it. And those same courts should now force that communist bastard, Bruce Springsteen, to perform like a monkey for all the hood-wearing hillbillies of the South or else face multi-million dollar fines and court fees for, uh, and, and not even including the class action uh, civil suits that would come. And I believe that's po poetic justice. And what do you think of that? If they if they were to do that right now, it's total hypo hypocrisy. It, it is not only that, but they the dates have been set, uh, the arenas have been paid for, have been arranged, and and they are scheduled to be there in North Carolina to play. To then say I'm pulling out last minute because you have your beliefs, and I'm pulling out based on your beliefs. Yeah, yeah. They should, okay, they so be forced. To so let's take this to. They a, should be forced. No, they should be fined the amount of money millions that it would it was going to cost. They should be fined well, that, and, that and goes, then also finding on top of them for being a bigot, which is what they were doing to the bakeries and the pizza correct, parlors. Correct. All this money goes to the pizza parlors and bakery. <laughs> well, here's my point. Let's take it to its all the way extreme end. Okay. All right. Let's say you have um, uh, a bakery owner who is a complete religious nut bigot, and when a, uh, a gay couple comes in and says, I want you, I want to hire you to perform the catering for my gay wedding. All right? Now, okay. the religious owners of the bakery say, no, 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 we can't be involved in something because we don't believe in it because of our religious beliefs. We'll bake your cake, but we can't be in the ceremony. It just can't happen. The court says, no, you will bake them their cake with two penises on it, and you will go and you will perform everything that you need to do to cater that event that you disagree with. So the courts made them do that, right? Why could – now let's take the extreme with the Bruce Springsteen case. Let's say – now I'm being unfair uh, to North Carolina by suggesting this, but let's just use a fake hypothetical situation. Let's say – Everybody in North Carolina are all KKK members. And when they go to concerts, they wear white hoods, possibly even burn crosses. Okay? Okay. Bruce Springsteen looks at that and says, whoa, I am not going to perform at this venue with these people there because I do not gr agree with all the KKK hoods and the burning crosses. That I just don't believe in that. Shouldn't the courts then say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, it is not for you to discriminate against these white hood wearing people. Right. 
Do you? You must. You yeah. must perform for them, or else you're going to face some massive fines. Okay. Do you remember the uh, website ChristianMingle.com? Oh yeah. That old guy that come out on a commercial and he said, "We've we've we've got it down to a science, and we'll find you the right connection." Okay. When I lived in L.A., a gay organization sued them for not uh, allowing them or not having the ability to uh, find a man on man or a woman on woman. They only, the only dating site, the only button you can click, I'm a man looking for a woman. I'm a woman looking for a man. Right. There's no other. So they got sued. And in court, Christian Mingle said, uh, we don't specialize in that type of relationship. We don't specialize. That means they do it. They just don't specialize. No, no, no. We, we don't. <laughs> well, we wouldn't. Our business model does not. We, we don't know how to cater to that because we don't do that. Because we're specifically Christians. And we specifically cater, we spe we specialize in Christian-based dating for man and woman. We don't know how to do it for you. And they won. Oh, really? They won. Oh, that's such a relief. We don't know how to do that for you. We, we don't know how. Yeah, that you is You want us to do something we don't know nothing about. We don't know that. That is And awesome. why that's not being brought up now with these the bakeries and the pizzerias is beyond me. Oh. No, I, I thought that that was an awesome expose of hypocrisy. Um, I'll thank Rush for that because uh, I don't want to take credit for coming up with that. I, anytime I come up with something brilliant, I like to take credit for it, but I do not like to steal somebody else's brilliant thoughts. I thought that that was good. I, it was good enough for me to rehash it on the on the show here. Right. No, no, definitely. Okay, so you want to skip to... Uh, we didn't get to the abortion situation. That's what I'm saying. You want to skip to that? Was there something besides that? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so moving right along, flowing with the script of the of the, sh the show. And by the way, folks, this show is completely unscripted. We don't have teleprompters. No, yeah, we don't have teleprompters, but I, I do have a, a, an outline that I'm very loosely <laughs> adhering to. It's a shady, real shoddy outline <laughs> okay <laughs> so here's the thing about the abortion thing um cruise people online i don't really see this in the media or anything like that but when you're on twitter when the cruise people are incessantly attacking trump people it's this that the cruise people are accusing trump of flip-flopping on abortion and that somehow being unconstitutional, which I don't really get that. And Ronald Reagan also flip-flop on abortion. I personally flip-flop on abortion. But they're saying it happened this week. So I just called him out and I said, dude, that's just not true. It's just simply not true. So here's what – here's my very informal, thrown-together timeline of, of the abortion thing with Trump. Originally, he said that he's – anti-abortion and that if and i don't know how far back I don't, i'm not talking 80s here i'm talking just recently he's anti-abortion and if it were ever made illegal he thinks that the murderers should be punished which in this case would be the woman got taken to the woodshed for that however the way we talked about people. we talked yeah, yeah, yeah. about this so that was originally so he had to backtrack that and instead of saying that the mother should be uh, punished, it should be the doctor. Yeah, that's what I meant. Now, this week, so we're talking about a guy who's against abortion. Correct. And if made illegal, just there should be a justice serve type of thing, which is if you perform it or if you order it, just like the mafia. We had a whole show on this. And you said if it's illegal. If it's illegal. If. That whoever does it or orders it should be punished. And even Rush said that that was sort of – that Trump should have been ready for a media trick question. I don't even know how that's a trick question. It, I mean, it's a just, trick question because it's a hypothetical. Okay. I don't know. What if monkeys fly out of my I, – I don't know. What, what if, if? What if pilgrims shot cats instead of turkeys? Then we'd all be eating – Right. P 20, word. 20, 20, but all the time. Yeah. So, okay. Woo! Uh, so, um, yeah, just avoided the censors there. Um, 
So he backtracked and said, uh, okay, just punish the doctors who perform it. If it ever became illegal. So this week he comes out with something else.